okay first of all before anybody says it I know I've got some Billy Loomis looking thing going on right now and that's because I've just come home from the cinema and the weather out there is absolutely wild blowing me all over the place and it's snowing and ugh, Britain but I just want to say this is not a cosplay <laughs> at least it's not intentional hello and welcome back to a real horror show the YouTube channel dedicated to all things horror so as I said I've just come home from watching Scream 6 Ghostface Takes Manhattan, as I called it in my previous trailer reaction video. It's kind of true though. And the first thing I want to say is that there may be some spoilers in this short review. Like I said, I've just come back, so I've had to take all the information in. I haven't had long to think about it, but while I was in the cinema, I did jot some notes down in a, in a little notepad that I took with me like a nerd. <laughs> Not the best idea, by the way, to take notes in a, in a really dark cinema. You should see the state of the notepad. <laughs> so yeah, there may be some spoilers, but I just want to give my thoughts on the film. Yeah, just want to share that with you guys. So I've been extremely excited for Scream 6 to be released. Today's the day. Happy Scream Day. It's finally here. I saw it at the earliest showing, and I've got to say, I was impressed. Now, as everybody knows, this installment of the franchise is set in New York City. Now, that's a very different environment for Ghostface, well, for the franchise that we're not very used to. It was really refreshing, but I did kind of feel like they could have used that a bit more. I mean, they did a much better job than Jason Takes Manhattan, at least half the film wasn't set on a freaking boat. I thought maybe they were going to implement some more New York land landmarks in the film and stuff. Maybe that would have been really cheesy though, but I think it would have been nice. Despite that, even though the film was set in New York, it still managed to feel somewhat claustrophobic in a place that shouldn't feel that way. I mean, it's claustrophobic with people, but it's obviously not a small town vibe like the other films have. Yet the film still managed to make you feel that way, which it was quite good. I think it was very clever they set the film on Halloween. I mean, I think it was set on Halloween. I, I kind of missed it they stated that or not, but everyone's dressing up, so I assume it's for Halloween, which is a clever move because it still allows Ghostface to move around in public, you know, do that kind of thing. It makes sense. Speaking of Jason Takes Manhattan, we get a really nice Easter egg, pretty much right at the start of the film, where we see Jason on the on the, on the TV. I'm glad that they put that Easter egg in. It's kind of like the filmmaker saying, yes, guys, we get it. You know, this is for you horror fans, we know. Speaking of the opening scene, before I saw the film, I saw a lot of people post online. I mean, I tried to avoid spoilers as much as possible, but when people started to watch the film, they were posting about how great the opening scene was for this movie, which had me interested. And I've got to say, it probably is the best opening of a Scream movie since the original. The main reason for that is because it does something just very different. But the opening scene started, and of course, Someone got killed. It was so interesting because you see the ghost face killer and I was like, are they actually gonna reveal who the killer is? There's something wrong about this. You know, this is a trick and it was a trick because it turns out that was not the real ghost face killer. And I was like, oh, that's so interesting. So that kind of got my attention right away. And it was also a very gory opening. Not so much in terms of the kill, but a reveal of one of the dead bodies is very gory. Now, of course, something else that's new about this film is that there is no Neve Campbell. Of course, she is greatly missed because she is a leading lady. She is Sydney Prescott. Despite that, Melissa Barrera and Jenna Ortega really do a great job of carrying this film. It's also great to see Hayden Panettiere back as Kirby and also Courtney Cox. Now, even though it was great to see Gail Webber's return, I do feel like her character didn't bring much to this film, especially in terms of the plot. It seemed very clear that she was back because she is a legacy character, fans want to see her, and to be honest, the film kind of made fun of this in its own meta sort of way. But as I said, it was nice to see her back. As you may have seen in my trailer reaction, I did say that that is definitely a Courtney Cox death scene right there. And I thought it was. I mean, in this film, she gets stabbed with this huge shard of glass and it's like surely she's dead and it was like her kind of death scene but it ends with her still having like a bit of a pulse so i assumed at the end of the film it's gonna be like scream 2 where she shows up at the very end and then helps them kill the ghost face killer but nah no that didn't happen <laughs> and that's what i mean when i say she didn't seem to bring much to this film but we can assume she's gonna be in scream 7 and that film has been greenlit so I assume she's going to be there. Now, as I mentioned with the Gail Webber's thing about how she got stabbed with a shard of glass, that does bring me on to the more negative aspects of the film, depending on how you look at it. 
because in this installment of Scream, nobody seems to die. <laughs> Some characters get stabbed like 50 times, I'm not even kidding, and they just, they just do not die. Tis but a scratch. A scratch? Your arm's off! It was very ridiculous and it came across as like some kind of Monty Python sketch. And you know, it was the classic tropes of people doing too little too late. They could avoid the situation, but they don't. There, there was a really funny moment though, <laughs> with the guy with the shotgun. As, you, as you've seen in the trailer, there is a scene where Ghostface gets a shotgun. Now the guy who goes to shoot Ghostface with that shotgun, he literally shouts, hey! And then Ghostface turns around and then he shoots. It's like, <laughs> why would you shout hey and get his attention instead of just shooting him? <laughs> it was such a weird choice to put in there because sure, Surely the filmmakers knew that's gonna piss some people off. I mean, maybe that's what they were going for, I don't know. It was funny, but I can see how people would be annoyed. However, it is a Scream film, don't take it too serious. But there were some genuinely funny moments, especially the part where Gail Weathers put Ghostface on hold and Ghost is like, wait, what, what, what's happening? Again, it was another thing the film did that made it just a bit different from its predecessors. And let's be honest, at the sixth film, that can get hard to do. In addition to that, they have seem to have definitely tried to modernize the Scream franchise just a little bit more in this film. And the main way they've done that is kind of bring it to the era in the sense of cancel culture and stuff is definitely referenced in this film. It is implied the negative sides of social media and how things can be edited and changed to make people look bad. That's definitely a, a theme in this film. That whole commentary is only really talked about in one part of the film. Film. So it's not like a reoccurring theme, but it is there nonetheless. Also, there's a ridiculous amount of references to the previous installments of the franchise in this film. In fact, it's a whole plot point. I mean, the Ghostface Killer literally has a freaking shrine dedicated to the previous Ghostface Killers that includes like so many Easter eggs of their previous Ghostface costumes and items from the previous murders and the other films. I mean, if you're a Scream fan, it, it, you'll be seeing references literally all across the screen. I mean, I don't know, maybe the film's implying that people who collect horror stuff are serial killers or something. Is there something on my face? But besides the ghost face shrine, there was a lot of references, especially in that subway scene. We saw this in the trailer, but there were so many references to other characters and films with people in the costumes, everything like Michael Myers was there, Pinhead, Freddy Krueger, the Babadook, there were loads. In fact, at one point, I think at the start of that scene, as they were coming down the subway stairs, there was a person going up the stairs dressed as Mojo Jojo from the Powerpuff Girls. I could be wrong on this, but it was like a shot of them from behind and it kind of looked like that. And if you don't know, Roger L. Jackson, who voices the ghost face killer of like the phone voice, he also voices Mojo Jojo in the Powerpuff Girls. So I was like, if they've done that as a reference, that is, you know, it's a really good Easter egg right there. Some weren't as subtle. They used a lot of music from the previous films. The most notable of this being Nick Caves and the Bad Seeds, Red Right Hand was in there, as well as Dewey's music, well I guess Dewey's theme from the previous films when he is shown and mentioned. But an easter egg that I really 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 like is that Gail Weathers apartment building is on West 96th Street and I really loved that because instantly I was like the first screen came out in 1996 and West take up the T, you've got West as in the late great Wes Craven. That must have been a reference. I thought I'm a clutching at straws here with this one, but I don't think I am. You see the number 96 quite a few times throughout the film, so I think it's definitely paying an homage in that way. Now the final thing I want to talk about is Ghostface himself. And the reason I want to talk about Ghostface, besides the fact that that's kind of like why we go to see these movies mainly, is because his character has changed and evolved quite a lot from the Ghostface that we're used to. Now again, this could be a good or a bad thing, I don't personally mind it, but if you're looking for a ghost face that is much more dark and brutal and more to the point, this is going to be the film for you. Ghostface has certainly lost a lot of his more Scooby-Doo like cartoonish features, the way he chases people and the slapstick side of him where he's always falling over stuff or getting stuff smashed around his head. <laughs> You know, that, that goofy stuff, it's kind of gone in this film. It's still there, but you can tell that it's just not the same. And I'm not gonna lie, I kind of missed that. Even though it's silly, I think it's a really iconic part of Ghostface. And I think that's the reason why 
people really love that character. Lastly, when it comes to Ghostface, Skeet Ulrich returned again in his role as, of course, Billy Loomis, but we saw no Matthew Lillard. Those theories, I think, were put to bed a long time ago anyway. He's not there. It would have been great if he was. What a twist. Maybe they're saving it for the seventh one. <laughs> we'll see what happens. So in conclusion, if you're a Scream fan, you're going to love it. If you're not a Scream fan, you'll find that it's still an extremely entertaining film. And I do recommend you go and see it. So Scream 6, really fun ride. And I can't wait to see what Scream 7 has in store for us. One last thing I want to say about this film. It is a Scream movie. So don't take it too serious because it doesn't take itself serious. Okay guys, so there we have it. I just want to say a big thank you for coming to the channel and checking out this video. Please comment below what you thought about Scream 6. Is there something that you agree with what I thought about the film? Is there something you disagree with? Or is there something that you noticed in the film that I might have missed? Let me know, let's have a chat. I also want to say a big thank you for all the support across the channel, from the likes, comments and the subscriptions and everything it's all that good stuff thank you so much i really do appreciate it and until next time guys take care